welcome to episode number seven of The Scout Scientist. This week I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than usual because I thought it was important to acknowledge what's actually going on at the minute um, and talk a little bit about the science behind the coronavirus. So every day we're getting updates from these government officials telling us um, what to do next and how to prepare and how to cope during these times um, and also telling us about the science behind the virus but once again more often than not these people are an old white middle class male often with quite a posh accent now I'm not trying to put them down or you know say anything bad about them but what I am saying is once again how on earth can our young people from normal working class backgrounds with accents such as mine how can they look at those type of people and think that that's something that they can aspire to so hopefully once again that's what I'm here for to provide a role model in science that our young people can actually relate to so before I start, it's really important to say that I am not an expert in this field whatsoever. My field is genetics, but um, I do have a science background. So I thought I could put that to some use um, and explain a little bit about the science behind this pandemic. Um, I've also roped in one of my best friends, Lucy Nugent, because she is actually a trainee clinical scientist in immunology. So she's a lot more knowledgeable about this area than I am. Um, it's also important to state that, you know, I'm not here to offer any advice or tell you what to do in this situation. Um, I'm just simply trying to explain the science to you. Um, and hopefully in a way that you can understand and that our kids can understand. So why is it called coronavirus? Well, as determined by the World Health Organization, the name of the actual virus is called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. And that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's basically because it's related to this previous SARS outbreak that we had. Now, the name of the disease that it causes is coronavirus disease, otherwise known as COVID-19. So, the name coronavirus actually comes from the Latin word corona, which means crown. Now, that's because the structure of the virus, it's kind of like a sphere with loads of spiky bits coming out along the edge, um, which kind of looks like a crown. So that's where we get the word corona from. Um, and now a virus is used to describe a little tiny parasite that needs to invade a host, such as a human, in order to thrive and reproduce. Therefore, COVID-19 just means CO for corona, VI for virus, D for disease, and 19 because it was discovered in 2019. So now we're going to head over to Lucy, who is going to tell us a little bit more about the virus, how it spreads, and why does it make us ill. Thanks very much Holly. So hi everyone, as Holly said my name's Lucy and I'm a trainee clinical scientist specialising in clinical immunology and Holly's asked me to talk to you today a little bit about viruses, um, how they spread and how they can make us ill. So viruses, at some point in our lives all of us will have experienced a virus at some point. We might have had a virus and not even known about it, we might not have had any symptoms. Or we might have felt ill for a couple of days but then started to feel a little bit better afterwards. Now this is all thanks to our tightly controlled immune system. So our immune system has really effective ways to stop us from getting ill. And that can be to stop a virus from getting into our bodies in the first place through things like physical barriers such as our skin. And if a virus does get into our bodies, there's a whole host of immune cells and immune pathways that become activated to stop them. So sometimes our immune system is busy working away in the background, getting this done before we even have chance to feel ill ourselves. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer for it to get started. And in this time we can start to feel ill with symptoms. 
So during this time, damage can be done to our tissues in our body by the virus itself and even sometimes by the strong immune response. So some people with coronavirus can have lung problems such as shortness of breath and pneumonia, and this is because COVID-19 targets lung tissues in particular. Another symptom that we commonly see is a fever, and this is down to our immune system working hard to eradicate the virus. So once a virus spreads from one person to another, it can spread throughout a whole population and beyond pretty quickly. Now, COVID-19 is a novel strain of coronavirus, which means that our immune systems have never seen it before. So we don't have the immunological memory cells that help us to stop the virus in its tracks before we get ill. And like many viruses, COVID-19 is passed on through aerosol or droplet transmission. So when you've got the virus, whether you've got symptoms or not, if you cough, sneeze, touch a surface and then somebody touches it and either touches their nose, face or eyes, then the virus can be passed on to them. And this can happen when people are close by. So this is why it's really important to follow the social distancing rules and stay at least two metres apart from other people. Everywhere I turn recently, I keep seeing the phrase flatten the curve. Um, it's been said in the news, in the newspapers, and even as a hashtag on Twitter, hashtag flatten the curve. But has anyone actually explained what that means? Um, maybe they have and I've just missed it, but certainly from what I've seen, nobody's actually explained what they mean by that. So how on earth can people or kids without that much science knowledge understand what that actually means? So, in order to understand what that means, it's important to understand how a pandemic usually spreads. So, I've drawn out a little graph here. I did print one out from the internet, but then I wasn't sure what the rules are about using stuff from the internet and putting it on YouTube. So, you've got my own hand-drawn one for now. Anyway, this is just a graph of the number of cases over time. So how the number of cases in a pandemic changes over time. So as you can see, at the start, um, the number of cases goes up quite slowly. So as one person gets it, then another couple of people get it, and then a few more people get it. And it just goes up quite slowly. But then all of a sudden, the number of people infected goes up at a much rapid rate. Um, and we call this exponential growth. Um, now, what that means is, rather than just one person getting it, then two, then three, then four, and going up nice and steadily, it actually spreads much faster than that. So it's more like one person gets it, then two, then four, then eight, then 16, 32, etc. So it goes up, the numbers get much higher, much faster. So then um, the number of cases reaches a peak, where lots and lots of people are infected and then the number of cases slowly reduces um, and that's usually because everyone or most people have had the virus and now they've become immune to it. So the problem with this curve here is that lots of, lots of people are infected at the same time. Now, our healthcare system, the NHS, um, has only got a limited number of resources so let's just say the NHS can only cope with a certain number of um, people being infected at once. Now, I don't know what that number is, but let's just say it's here. So this is the number of cases at which the NHS can cope. So if the number of people infected at any one time goes above this number, then that's when the NHS can't cope due to a lack of resources, equipment, beds, staff. Um, and that's when people won't be treated um, adequately. So when they say flatten the curve, what they actually mean is we need to get this peak below the number at which the NHS can cope. So it should look something more like this. So if we can flatten that curve and keep the um, number of people infected 
below the number at which the NHS can cope then that'll mean we'll all be treated fine um, and there'll be no problems in the NHS. Everyone will receive adequate treatment in order to recover. So that's all they mean by flattening the curve. So how can we flatten this curve? Well, this is at now where all the government advice and guidelines come into play because all we need to do to flatten this curve is um, limit the spread of the virus so we can do this by self-isolating social distancing and um, washing our hands which I'm sure you're all sick of hearing by now um, but in all honesty it's quite a simple task and not really that much to ask in order to save thousands of lives and protect our NHS right so that's all that we've got time for today Thank you so much to everyone who's watched the video. If you've enjoyed it and found it interesting, then please do share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on social media as The Scout Scientist. Thank you as well to Lucy for all your help with this video. So in the meantime, please do take care of yourselves, take care of each other from a distance, of course, if they're not in the same household as you. Um, and hopefully we'll come out the other side and next time I see you we'll be well over the worst of this. So thanks again so much to everyone for watching. Take care.